This video is for you if you've never used Dynamic EQ before. We added Dynamic EQ to our stock Pro EQ plugin a while back. And if you've never used it, you may be a little intimidated by it. It's really simple. I'm going to show you two easy ways you can use it and add it to your workflow, specifically related to mixing vocals. So let's jump in. Here's Studio One, and here is a vocal from a country tune, and it's got two problems. The first is just a general problem with vocals in general. How many times can I say general? Where the the way you mix a vocal, the way you've added compression, a lot of times, especially if it was recorded with a condenser microphone, can add or emphasize the sibilance of the voice. So you can hear that here. And I fell to my knees and I cried. So that S there. Knees and I Very sharp chops our ears off. That's not how the raw recording sounds, but after our EQ and compression, we got everything sounding delightful on the vowel sounds, but that top part is pretty spicy. So we're going to deal with that. Now there's lots of ways, as with most things in music, um, there are many different ways to deal with a problem. We do have a de-esser plug-in that works wonderfully, but if you're already in your EQ, you may just want to go ahead and deal with it with your EQ. So here is, I'm going to turn this on. This, by the way, is Pro EQ 3. This is the stock EQ in Studio One. People, generally speaking, you may find that you tend to, just by no fault of your own, think of stock default plugins as being less than or perhaps even being bad. I would encourage you to use the stock stuff in Studio One. We... It doesn't matter to me if you use third-party plugins or not, but what I do see a lot, I see people who jump from third-party plugin bundle to third-party plugin bundle seeking the magic formula to help them mix better when in reality it was that they don't mix very well. It doesn't matter what tools you use if you don't get good at the actual art of mixing, right? It's like, oh, this guitar sucks. I need a better guitar. This guitar sucks. I need a better guitar. This guitar... At some point, it's me that sucks and not the $10,000 guitar I just bought. So I didn't just buy a $10,000 guitar. Um, th that's not to say that there isn't a place for third-party plugins, but especially if you are new and you're trying to learn how to get good sounds, I used exclusively this EQ a few versions back that didn't even have dynamic EQ and the stock compressor as my go-to, my only EQ and compressor for ye years. Not because someone challenged me to, just because I didn't feel this deep need to go buy plugins and install plugins and deal with... Pl it just comes with Studio One and it works. I can install Studio One and then I can just start making music. It's pretty great. So, sermon over. Um, however, Pro EQ, especially now, this is Pro EQ 3, I'm using Studio One version 6, uh, it's really powerful, and this Dynamic EQ piece makes it a lot more powerful than it used to be. Now, the way to access Dynamic EQ is uh, there's a button up here that'll turn it on and off so you can see it. So this is kind of the normal EQ you're used to seeing. If you click this button, it'll show you the Dynamics section. So this is a five-band EQ, one, two, three, four, five, plus it has a low-cut and a high-cut filter. Um, the Each of these five internal bands can behave as a dynamic EQ, which means we could set up a specific EQ curve, something like this, and then we could tell it to when something in within this range crosses a certain a certain threshold, <laughs> a certain threshold, let's turn it down, but let's only turn down the stuff kind of inside that range. So it's a little bit like a dynamic Sorry, a little bit like a multiband compressor, but it acts more like an EQ. So multiband compressor typically is working on a range of frequencies, and it's it's pretty kind of cut and dry, like it's a big chunk of frequencies. We could have a dynamic EQ that does something like this and only works on this narrow notch of frequencies and only turns them down when they get too loud. That's the secret here. So back to our problem of sibilance. If we just look at the way the frequencies are working on this vocal, you can see where the sibilance is happening. Take a look. And I fell to my knees and I cried. Right in here, which is right in this kind of 8K range, is where the bulk of that sibilance is happening. So what I've done is I've added a dynamic EQ. And all it is, it's an EQ curve that looks like this, and I've got it set to zero, so I'm not actually EQing the vocal except when it gets too loud there. 
and I just have two controls for the dynamic portion, the threshold and the range. So since I want to be real aggressive with this S, the sibilance, and because the dynamic EQ is fairly transparent and isn't super aggressive on its own, I've brought this range down all the way. That just says how far, you're telling this EQ, how far down am I allowed to turn this down if it gets out of hand? And I'm saying just go for it. And the threshold is saying at what volume, when it kind of gets to a certain loudness, when do I start turning it down? And that's what I've set here. And if I hit play, you're going to hear it. the S in that vocal is a lot more tame than it was before. And you get to see this dancing around when it comes through. And I fell to my knees and I cry. So the, the S at the end of the word knees, listen to how that makes you wince without this dynamic EQ. And I fell to my knees and I cry. Very loud. Now it sounds very natural. And I fell to my knees and I cry. We can even go more aggressive if we want. And I fell to my knees and I cry. That's almost a little too much. I'd pull that back a little bit. But that is suddenly, we haven't changed the sound of anything else on the vocal except those sibilant sounds. That's what's so cool about this. You may say, well, Joe, why not just do this with an EQ. Just roll those frequencies down because they're too loud. Because they're only too loud at certain moments in time. If I turn this down, I'm turning it down permanently, which means the vocal is now going to sound really dull. And I fell to my knee. Right? That sounds like muffled. I don't want that. I just want to turn it down when it becomes a problem. And then the rest of the time, I want to have all these nice airy frequencies in the vocal because all those vowel sounds need a nice air on top of them that sounds lovely but when it goes when that little sound jumps out real high i want to smacketh it down and this dynamic eq lets me do that perfectly um again we have a de-esser now you can do it with a de-esser i just sometimes like to do it with a dynamic eq especially when i'm doing what i'm about to show you next which is the second problem with vocals and it's less sibilance is kind of common across the board you can't escape it, typically. Um, you're going to run into it with vocals if you use any amount of compression on your vocal. However, this one is certain types of vocals have a nasal quality to them. Um, it's not like a, a judgment about the quality of the singing, but like this. This is country. Country, part of what we imagine with country is, we're going to sing from the back of our throats. And we're going to have things go through our noses more than it normally does. And what does that do? It creates this nasal tone. What is a nasal tone? Well, part of that is there's a whole bunch of stuff happening around 2, 3K, that eh, 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 frequency. That's what makes it sound nasal. That's what makes it cut through. It's also like, ironically, like an opera singer who's got a voice that like pierces through the auditorium, has a bunch of like a bunch of that upper mid-range stuff. Also, kind of a fun fact. But either way it can become too much, especially on certain vowel sounds. So when he sings knees, the E vowel sound, E, just by itself is already pretty nasal, right? We can't, we can't say it without our nose involved. E, 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 E. It comes out the nose more than it comes out the mouth, which, by the way, maybe you didn't realize this. We use our noses. Even if we don't talk really nasally, we still use our noses to talk. That's why when you hold your nose, your voice sounds different. Because a portion of the sound is coming up through that hole in the back and coming out your nose. Like, that's part, just part of it. Like, the M sound can't happen without your nose. Because then it goes, mm. <laughs> you need it to go. Anyway, um, so when people sing, some people use more or less of their nasal cavity. And especially on certain vowel sounds, the eh gets really prominent and sticks out. 30, 40 years ago, 50 years ago, on a big console, you wouldn't have much of a recourse other than to maybe try a different microphone or, hey, can you sing less nasal? Thanks. Um, but now we have all the tools available to us, namely Dynamic EQ, that lets us do essentially the exact same thing we just did to the sibilance, but now to those upper mid frequencies. So listen to his, his uh, that kind of eh, eh, frequency of his voice. And I feel some... Actually, it happens on that first sound. The Anna, it's got that nasal thing. And I feel... And I feel... And I f you can see it kind of jumping up right here, literally in the frequency graph. And I fell to my knees and I cry. And then when he sings knees, check out in this range which frequency jumps up the most. And I fell to my knees and I that right there. That if I could take a screenshot of it, is let's do it. Actually, let's take a screenshot of it. Uh, hold, please. Here we go. 
Oh, I can't hit play while this is on. Hang on. Play. And I fell to my knees and... <laughs> I totally couldn't move fast enough. Let's just assume I took a screenshot. What you'll see is that this frequency is the loudest frequency in his voice. Aside from the, the fundamental note that he's singing down here. And I fell to my knees and... I there's a note here and a note here that are the loudest things in the mix. The note down here is just the note that he's singing. The note up here is the nasal part of his voice. And just for just for giggles, I'm going to emphasize it just to show you how gross it is. It's this frequency here. And I fell to my knees and I cry. It's almost like a whistly sort of a sound. Not pleasant. And so what ends up happening is over the over the top of the entire mix, it just sounds it's like, I hear his voice, he's fine, and then suddenly he sings a word, and it goes, eh, and it sounds like harsh, and it makes us want to turn his voice down. We don't have to turn his voice down, we just need to turn down a few frequencies, and I've got these set to uh, actually exactly 2K, and that gets the problem done. So I'm going to turn this on. By the way, you can turn on each band by clicking this D button. You can even solo that band like this. That's the... That's what we're dealing with. But here's what it sounds like now that I've turned on the dynamic EQ. And I fell to my knees and I cry. You hear how knees just sounds like knees. <laughs> it's very proper. It doesn't have that knees sound to it anymore. We've not changed his voice. This still sounds like him. But instead of this. And I fell to my knees and. We get this. And I fell to my knees and. Subtle, yes, which is one of the things I love. Gregor's talked about this before. I love about this dynamic EQ is even if you go pretty aggressive with the settings, it's still pretty subtle. So it's hard to mess things up. I like things that are hard to mess up because I'm prone to mess things up sometimes. But that makes this voice sit in the mix so much better. And I fell to my knees and I cry. Now it just sits right on top of that mix instead of those frequencies jumping out whenever he sings an E vowel sound. So there you go, two very simple ways. And by the way, if you want to screenshot this, the specific frequencies and settings will be a little different on every vocal and every session. But generally speaking, something like this will take you far when it comes to both de-essing and de-nasalifying your vocals. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Appreciate you. I'll see you in the next one.